Hello, everyone, and welcome to Senior Living. We have a lot in store for you on this episode, and we're glad that you chose to join us. Um, we have had a great start to the month of May. There's been an awful lot going on in and around the Verde Valley. Uh, I'm sure all of you, most of you, enjoyed some part of the Verde Valley Fair, had several motorcycle ride uh, fundraisers, Relay for Life. Um, a lot of great, wonderful things coming up right around the corner. If you're watching our show prior to the weekend of the 18th and 19th, the, uh, the Yavapai County Home and Garden Show is going on this weekend. The Jerome Home Tour is happening. Uh, a lot of great things that are going on right around the corner. And of course, later in the month, again, we have a lot of uh, activity, a lot of informational kinds of things that everyone can take advantage of. And our first guest is going to tell us about one of the most exciting ones that will be happening in the Verde Valley, in Sedona to be specific. Rue, thank you for joining us. Rue is the director of the Sedona <laughs> Film School. And Coming up the weekend of the 24th, 25th, 26th mm -hmm. is the Sedona Film Festival. Um, a great, great opportunity to check out some of the talent that we've uh, de been developing right here in the Verde Valley. Yes. Uh, how's everything been going this year at the school? Got a lot of great good. students, I understand. Yes, we have a lot of good students this year. Um, it's been really interesting to see how they progress from, you know, some of them are coming in in September really not having made a film before, maybe, you know, made some YouTube videos or something mm -hmm. like that, but really not gone through the process of writing a script and doing pre-production or researching a story for a documentary and, and making an actual film. And so it's been fantastic to see how they come in with that maybe no or maybe a little bit of knowledge and then make these great films. We, we got to screen them last week for the peer judged awards that mm -hmm. are given out on Sunday and it was really fun to see some of the things that they were able to accomplish in really just nine months. I mean it's not that long of amount of time. It's not and, and they have to, some of them probably even go through the process, is this really what I want to do? So that's sure. pretty sure. pretty incredible. Just a couple of minutes, a very brief description for those who may not know the school is part of Yavapai College. Correct. And just just a short description of how the school is formatted. Sure. Um, the Sedona Film School is part of Yavapai College, and it's a nine-month certificate program. Students can select either a narrative track or a documentary track, and that's based on what their assignments and their thesis film would be. So mm -hmm. it's a different type of curriculum. Mm -hmm. But what they're doing is everything is hands-on. So they're coming in, and rather than sitting in a room for months talking about um, how to use a camera or how to set up lights, they get equipment in their hands within the first two weeks of school and they make eight short films in the fall semester and then they make their 20 minute thesis film in the spring semester and those thesis films are the ones that we screen at the festival. In the past, students have come up with some pretty successful shorts and yes. uh, documentaries that, that, they've, that have kind of helped them springboard to the next level. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, actually, one of the... Uh, most the best examples I think is probably the film about the condors mm -hmm. that um, was a documentary and uh, usually films short films don't get distribution but mm -hmm. she was able to get distribution because of the educational value of her film and because she approached it through this family that works with these birds and is reintroducing them and she won the um, Andrew Carnegie Medal of Excellence in Children's Video from the American Library Association this year so that's kind of a, a good example you know of something just really recent that's a recent graduate that was able to accomplish that I got goosebumps a little bit yeah. I think that's pretty <laughs> exciting it really is yeah so so now we want to hear about the actual the film festival itself there's yes. a lot of a lot packed into a short period of time it is. It is a really just crazy few days. Mm -hmm. um, it's exciting for the students because, of course, they're getting to screen their films before a live audience. We have our kickoff on Friday night, which is the Career and Gear Fair, mm -hmm. and we have some local companies like yeah, Pi Broadcasting, mm -hmm. um, and we also have some equipment vendors like JBC Cameras, which is what the school uses, mm -hmm. and they'll be there talking about you know different opportunities, possibly for internships or equipment information, and we have tons of stuff we'll be raffling off that night as well, mm -hmm. equipment-related stuff. And then all day Saturday and Sunday, we have screenings of the shorts, and it's not just our graduates' films. We also have the winners from our nationwide high school film competition. Oh, yeah. um, we have alumni projects. And then we also have last year's award winners. So for people who weren't at the festival last year or didn't get to see them, they'll be able to see the films, the student films that won awards last year. And then Saturday night, we have a special feature film presentation. And this year, that will be Kweku Mandela's film, Fanny Fori's La Bola. 
uh, which was a, won the Best Comedy Award at the Sedona International Film Festival. And then Sunday, we have, after we finish our screenings at 5, we have our award ceremony. So the peer judged awards are given out, and then also all the films are balloted over the weekend. So there's an oh. audience choice award on Sunday as well. So everyone who comes to screen films gets to vote, and their vote gets counted by our little ballot counting angels. <laughs> and then we give that audience choice award on Sunday as well. D do you have wings? Are you one of the ballot <laughs> counting angels? <laughs> I have double sets of wings. I'm flying around everywhere that weekend. Yeah, I'm, qu I, I'm pretty sure. So it would uh, it would make sense for some of the uh, for our viewers if you're planning to go plan to catch more than one spend spend yes. some time up there and yes. and I know that it's uh, it's all very reasonably priced and it's all in yes. one location correct Am yes I it's all at the film school mm -hmm. um, in Sedona mm -hmm. and the one day pass is only ten dollars right so you can come for an entire day see as many films as you can pack into that day for ten dollars which is a very great deal. My favorite was the whole event pass, which got you also the career and gear fair and free popcorn. And free popcorn all weekend. That's uh, only know, twenty five dollars. I know. The whole I was weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was all over that one. I the, all it needed to say was popcorn, and actually, while none of us are going to be familiar with the titles of the films that are being sure. presented, because because of the nature of it, um, I did look at the schedule and see the list and. Mm -hmm. The, the range of topics is uh, pretty amazing. Yes, it's really kind of exciting. And, and you know, we also have the benefit of having both a narrative and documentary program. Right. So you have those genres to start with. But we've got things as varied as the sea urchin business, you know, a documentary that follows a 72-year-old diver who dives every day for sea urchins to uh, a film about a superhero who goes into therapy. So it's just a very broad range. Motocross, a James Bond origin story, a Quentin Tarantino-esque kind of thriller. Um, really neat stuff and some really original ideas. A, a boy who's born with music coming out of his ears, um, at kind of almost as a birth defect, and it changes based on his mood. And oh, he's wow. raised in this little town and decides to go live in the big city and kind of the drama that ensues as he and his music travel into the big city. I see some very unique uh, subject matter coming out of some of your students. Yeah, That's going to be awesome. Definitely. Some really original ideas. It's, it's always fun to read the scripts, I think, and then see how they're able to translate that to the screen. Now, are you, as director of the school, are you involved in the day-to-day? -day? Do you get to watch closely all of the progress that these students make throughout oh, yes. the year? All right. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I think that's kind of one of the benefits of being what would you would call a boutique film school. So mm -hmm. we're, we're small, we have small class sizes, we have a real low student to teacher ratio, and we're all participatory. Okay. So in addition to being a director, I'm also in the classroom teaching, um, I teach screenwriting, I teach some of the scheduling and budgeting classes, mm -hmm. and then we're in the field with the students when they're on production so that they're getting feedback on different pieces of the puzzle when they're actually setting up lights and using the camera and directing actors. Excellent. I don't want to ask you to give anything away, mm -hmm. but if you could make a recommendation, be there, be, make sure you're here at this point, or <laughs> cut, don't, don't miss this one, or it, is there anything that you'd want to share, or do you just want to tell everybody, just be there all weekend? Well, you know, I think the way that we set up the screenings, um, you can pick either day, mm -hmm. and, and basically you'll be able to see most of the films. Okay, good. So, you know, that, that's one piece of the puzzle. If, you, if there's certain things that are only screening on one day that you want to see, for instance, the alumni films are only on Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a special presentation Sunday morning of Forgotten Fur, which is a film about homeless animals. Oh, yeah. And Joe Sowerby, who founded Petapalooza, is going to do a virtual Q&A via Skype for us because he's in Florida. But, um, well, that's a and great then opportunity. Red Rose Inspiration for Animals is going to be offering spay and neuter deals for you know people who have screening passes. Um, so there's kind of some different features each day, mm -hmm. you know, depending on what you want to do. But I think the the variety of films will make it interesting for people no matter when they come. And the high school award winner screen on both days mm -hmm. as well, so people will be able to see those. Mm -hmm. um, the the only things that are day specific would be the feature film presentation on Saturday. Right. You know, if you have a weekend pass, you'd get to see everything. But if right. you have a day pass, then, you know, that depends on the day that you pick. And then Sunday is the award ceremony. So it really is kind of varied. And Westside Deli is going to be there all weekend providing food, so people don't have to leave campus. Because we're was, kind of on point. the end of town, you right. know. So <laughs> right. keep you there, get some food. <laughs> Good point. Well, I think that um, the advice to to all of our viewers is 
go check it out. Whatever mm -hmm. time you've got that, uh, that you may be able to take advantage of it, you will definitely be thrilled that you did. Um, and this is located at the school. The address of the school, Rue, is 4215 mm -hmm. Arts Village Drive. And Arts and Village is on the west end of Sedona? It is, right across the street from the Sedona Red Rock High School kind of where the old cultural park cultural was park, located. Right. Yeah. So make sure that you check it out. Um, everything is going to be uh, is going to be interesting. I understand that the Career and Gear Fair is um, designed primarily for the students, if I'm not mistaken, but um, if you buy a pass, the weekend pass, you, mm -hmm. in, it's open to the public. Right, exactly. Okay. And right. it's it's kind of a good experience to just see the people that are involved in filmmaking. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit better environment to meet students. If mm -hmm. people are interested in meeting some of the filmmakers, you know, they'll all have Perfect. their filmmaker passes on and they'll be talking about their films. <laughs> so Ex it's a, a nice opportunity for that as well. Exactly. Ruth, thanks for joining us today. Sure. Thanks for filling everybody in on the Sedona Film Festival, um, a must-see. And we appreciate you stopping by. We look forward to getting back together. And Thanks. we're going to take a short break, and we'll come back right after these messages. Director at Bueller Funeral Homes. My grandfather once told me you can serve a family selfishly once or treat them right and serve that family for generations. Bueller Funeral Home has been serving Arizona families for three generations with affordable and reasonable services. Bueller Funeral Home feels a funeral should be as unique and personal as the individual it honors, whatever your choices, your traditions, or your budget. 8,000 Arizona men, women, and children battle the often debilitating impact of multiple sclerosis every day. You can help find a cure. Register today for Arizona's premier cycling event, Bike MS Ride the Vortex, May 18th and 19th, presented by Sam's Club. You choose the distance that's best for you from 30 to 150 miles. Proceeds fund research that can make a difference. For information and to register yourself or your team, visit www.bikemsarizona.org. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. Face drooping, arm weakness, speech difficulty. Time to call 911 and get them to a hospital immediately. Learn the body language and spot a stroke fast. Welcome back, and we are going to talk a little bit now about an event that's not just a one-day event. It, uh, it's taking some time to create, and we are very excited to have Nancy Rob Dunst in the studio with <laughs> us. You. And we are going to talk about Earth Cups, but before we do that, um, Nancy, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Appreciate it. Thank you. And we glad to be here. Are, good. I'm glad, <laughs> uh, I'm glad you were able to make it. First, we will, I want to ask you a little bit. The Earth Cups is an event that is designed to support Gardens for Humanity, correct? That's correct. Okay. Tell us a little bit first about Gardens for Humanity. What is it that we're supporting by doing this? Gardens for Humanity is an organization that was started in 1996 by Adele Saron. And we support programs that tend to the gardens of the human spirit. So we teach and celebrate our connection to nature and to the arts, and we also try to promote ecological s sustainability as well as um, more humane culture. So, so it, isn't, it isn't totally about a garden of greenery, but no. it is about the growth of, mm -hmm. uh, of the creativity and all of those kinds of things and getting back a little bit to the the basis the culture that is the basis of what of our lives yes and it is tied to the earth yes it, okay 
<laughs> All right. So, and you've been, it's been around since 96, did you say? Yes. And mm -hmm. has it been here in the area that whole time? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. So what are some of the, I've seen actually on the, on the website for Gardens for Humanity, mm -hmm. There are a lot of different things that you're involved in that mm -hmm. um, are, there's that there are events designed around it. But what is Earth Cups? Why Earth Cups? Earth Cups is a project that um, I developed because I think that it's real important that we have arts in the schools. And I also think that it's real important that we teach um, earth science in the schools. And so it's a combination of those two. Mm -hmm. And we now support five artists that go into five different schools in the Verde Valley and um, teach earth um, and arts science mm -hmm. using art tools. With, with so. the things that are happening in our school, the ability to provide that or to mm -hmm. offer that to the students is pretty amazing, pretty Well, and we do that for a number of reasons. Um, one of the reasons that we do it is because we know that when you use the arts in any academic subject, it deepens the learning because you use all the senses and they're throughout the brain. So mm -hmm. even if one part of your brain kind of dies a little bit, it still remembers because you learned it in also in another way. So, yeah. so we call that deep learning. Mm -hmm. And um, the other reason is this program particularly targets third graders mm -hmm. because we know that the third graders are, it's about that age mm -hmm. where they start backing away from the table if they are not doing well in math and reading. And so this is a program to help catch some of those kids and keep them in school that's, and keep them involved. That's amazing. So what's the process? What is Earth Cups? How do we, so well, Earth how Cups. are we doing this? <laughs> <laughs> well, as I said, we have these five artists that go into the schools and they each teach a five hour program in each school. Mm -hmm. So each school gets about 25 hours of this program. Mm -hmm. um, the way that we fund this program is we have a, an event called Earth Cups, a celebration of art and earth. And during the entire year, we make uh, ceramic cups and paint ceramic cups that are already bisqued, and, um, and then we sell those cups at the Earth Cups event. And then we also have like tasty little treats, and mm -hmm. Adele Saran will be there. She just recently wrote a, um, uh, a book about gardening of the spirit, okay. and she will be autographing Autogra the book there. So. <laughs> Yeah, very so it's, it'll be a very exciting event. We'll have teas and specialty coffees. The 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 cups for this year's event. The event mm -hmm. is June first, correct? Right. It's June first mm -hmm. from ten o'clock to one p.m. and it's at the Sedona Art Center. Right. Who who is that's where the cups have been created for the most part, correct? Yes, in the Sedona Art Center Clay Studio. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So, mm -hmm. Are these samples of cups that have been created for this yes, year? Yes, they are. Can you tell us a little yes, bit about are. a few of them? I'd love to hear. This is a really, really unique and beautiful one. This is a spoon cup that has a little spoon that works right in with the handle. And this was created by David Feischel, who is a very well-known international artist. And it, you really can't purchase his work for under $2,000. So this is really quite a deal. <laughs> this is, <laughs> on this yeah, cup. very nice. I'm going to set this down before I drop something. I love the yellow one here. What, what can you tell us about this one? This was a cup uh, created by Sharon Porter, who is recently moved here about four years ago and has, I believe, won almost every painting award we've had around in the Verde Valley. So, <laughs> so it's quite a beautiful cup. Now, is there a competition that goes along with this, or it's simply, I mean, the cups are created no. and they're auctioned? They're, they're, no, they're not auctioned. Oh, okay. We sell these cups. These, the painted cups we sell for $15. Okay, got it. And the handmade cups we sell for 10 Wow. And then there are some cups from the last year that we sell for 5 $5. So they Can't start at $5. Wrong. And you are supporting the, the, mm -hmm. the kids in our school. Wonderful handles on these. Mm -hmm. I love these. Mm -hmm. This is very, uh, very fun. Now, were these, I believe, maybe made by the same person? No? Yes. Okay. Actually, they were. 
They right. were made. I think I made those, both of those, actually. Woohoo! Woohoo! You, you have a, <laughs> not only um, somebody that's that's helping keep the arts and the creativity in our schools, but is an artist herself. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And then one more that's very, very beautiful, and I am going to reach right through here. This is really unique as well. Mm -hmm. Very nice. This was created by Carol Hoffman, and she is a well-known artist in the Verde Valley. Okay, so one more time, Nancy. Mm -hmm. The um, these cups will be available June first at the Sedona Art Center. June first at the Sedona Art Center, from ten to one, and we'll have other things there to eat and enjoy and music and and it usually is a very very fun event. Sounds like it. Um, I I did want to mention to you that this program is supported by the Arizona Commission on the Arts, the National Endowment for the Arts. The Sedona Arts Center, the City of Sedona, the Sedona Arts Festival, Sedona Visual Artists Coalition, and Yavapai um, Community Foundation. So we have quite a number of supporters that are helping us with this event. It's because they know because with all this program, yeah, because they the, really value it. The, the benefits of this program seem endless when you <clears throat> excuse me when you think about. Uh, what it could still, maybe not every kid will come out of third grade mm -hmm. with, uh, with a desire to be an artist per se, mm -hmm. but every one of them is going to take something away, and whatever you take away is, is a benefit and it helps, uh, helps teach them. Yeah, we don't really teach art in the schools to make great artists, just like we don't teach math to great, make great mathematicians. Mm -hmm. We teach art so that the students will have that skill to put in their skill box so when they go out into the world, they can really be quite empowered. Exactly. Mm -hmm. What uh, what next, what after Earth Cups? What's your next uh, event or your next project? With Gardens for Humanities, mm -hmm. um, we also do a spring festival. And at that time, we bring in different speakers who talk about all different kinds of ways to work with the Earth. Excellent. Mm -hmm. do, you get, do you get to help coordinate some of this? No, I just work with Earth Cups. Okay. And this is my program. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, so. Well, but I imagine in, in your capacity, it's probably a year long. Oh, oh we start on the next one right after you're done start, with this one. Yeah, we start in October. Mm -hmm. We start the program in October. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when these teachers go into the schools, um, one of, for example, one of the things they'll do is we have a dancer. Mm -hmm. And she goes in and teaches them movement. Mm -hmm. And then um, after that, she teaches them how to choreograph dance. And then she has them choreograph how a plant would grow from a seedling. Oh, my word. So those are the kinds of programs that we have. We the, have five different, um, the five different mm -hmm. cl teaching artists are a dancer, multimedia painter, mm -hmm. ceramic artist, and a watercolorist. Mm -hmm. So do each of the classes get to experience all Five of those? Yes. Wow. Yes. Each school gets 25 classes. That's pretty amazing. It is. It is. And we have one artist who is a, the ceramicist is a scientist, so she investigates seeds with the children. And amazing. it's very exciting. Yeah. If you want more information, Nancy Rob Dunst, uh, there have been articles uh, not only in Kudos, the website's been on screen. Please reach out. I think that there are some opportunities that we may be missing to really enrich mm -hmm. the lives and, and the, uh, the growth of our children. Nancy, thank you very much for joining us today. Best of luck. <laughs> I, I'm sure, I'm sure there's always good luck needed, but um, this is definitely a winner and uh, I, I wish the best for you and the organization and thank I'll you. follow up. I want to hear more um, down the road. All so right. we will see you again, I'm sure. We will see you right after these messages, so stay tuned. Hi, I'm Ben Bueller, owner and funeral director at Bueller Funeral Homes. My grandfather once told me, you can serve a family selfishly once, or treat them right and serve that family for generations. Bueller Funeral Home has been serving Arizona families for three generations with affordable and reasonable services. Bueller Funeral Home feels a funeral should be as unique and personal as the individual it honors, whatever your choices, your traditions, or your budget. 8,000 Arizona men, women, and children battle the often debilitating impact of multiple sclerosis every day. You can help find a cure. 
Register today for Arizona's premier cycling event, Bike MS Ride the Vortex, May 18th and 19th, presented by Sam's Club. You choose the distance that's best for you from 30 to 150 miles. Proceeds fund research that can make a difference. For information and to register yourself or your team, visit www.bikemsarizona.org. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. Face drooping, arm weakness, speech difficulty. Time to call 911 and get them to a hospital immediately. Learn the body language and spot a stroke fast. century uh, when a couple of doctors from New York uh, brought the techniques developed in Sweden to be um, implemented over here. It was very, very popular until maybe... Welcome back to Senior Living. Massage therapy has been around for thousands and thousands of years, but it was brought to the U.S. in the mid-19th century uh, when a couple of doctors from New York uh, brought the techniques developed in Sweden to be um, implemented over here. It was very, very popular until maybe the 30s, 1930s, and 40s when some of the medical advances of that time kind of took over, kind of took advantage of, uh, of the massage. But in the 70s, there was a huge resurgence, resurgence of the popularity of massage, um, due in part at least by the uh, use of massage from athletes. Since that time, there, have, um, there are now dozens and dozens of modalities or types of massage therapy. And whether or not you have had a massage, if the first thing that you think of when you hear the word massage is the spa treatment, you have an awful lot to learn. And we're uh, joined today by Candace and Mark Berenger. The, uh, they are both licensed massage therapists as well as co-founders of Northern Arizona uh, Massage Therapy Center. Did I say that right? Yes, correct. Welcome. Thank, thank you, thank, thank, you, you. thank you, thank you. You have both been in the healthcare field and massage therapy is truly one of the healthcare fields. You've been involved for many, many years. How did, how did you get started? Candace? <laughs> Goes back in time. So I've been, yeah, well, I've been in the field for 27 years, mm -hmm. and so uh, it began um, originally, uh, uh, I started through pre-medical school, I wanted to become a doctor, mm -hmm. and there's some things that happened in my life that, that, that uh, caused me to want to go into preventative care. I decided that the avenue I wanted to go down would be preventative care and my path led me to massage therapy because it's an excellent form of preventative care for anti-aging for longevity and helping people truly to feel good in their bodies and to find a successful route out of pain right for themselves Mark Candace just mentioned something that that I'm as you um, tell us a little bit about how you got started in the field I know that it's important and that's preventive maintenance yes. um, Massage can definitely make a sore back feel better um, at some point, but sometimes if you've let it go for too long, um, it, it can't be treated as effectively even by massage. So that, that being said, I know that you mentioned that earlier. What, how did your path get you into the massage therapy world? Well, I was uh, at first trained by a physical therapist and uh, years ago when I was a child, and that got me into it. Um, did it off and on for many years and then, and then found that it was a, a, a practice. And so I um, always had a love of that and the naturopathic route as opposed to 
uh, more of the traditional medical route, I guess, these days. So um, that really got me in, into that. As Candace said, her life uh, situations, uh, circumstances led her more into the naturopathic route. Mine uh, mm. has a similar kind of twist to it. I think life's experiences kind of develop who you are. So it, it, it definitely helped to develop and lead me into this career. And, and then um, with that um, spur interest uh, because of life circumstances to learn certain modalities that now I can offer. Well, speaking of that, there, like I, we've talked about, there are just dozens and dozens of different modalities. Right. Right. And I know that, I shouldn't say I know, I would believe that not every single therapist can be an expert at all of the different modalities, as right. many as there are. But tell us a little bit about the ones that you offer here. Well, we both um, have our areas of expertise that we specialize in. Mm -hmm. And it's so true, there's, there's hundreds of modalities out there. It would be very difficult to be good at it. Mm -hmm. So basically I have specialized in, a, in, in various techniques mm -hmm. and I know that's true for Mark as well. We're both trained as medical massage therapists so that means we're able to assess orthopedically or structurally on the, on the table as to what's going on physically mm -hmm. with the body. So and then that means we're able, we treat with uh, uh, myofascial trigger point therapy which will, it's like a road map, it leads us to helping to find the original trigger of what's causing the root of pain, you could say, in, in the body. Excellent. And then there's also, uh, I, I specialize in manual lymph drainage, and then also doing abdominal massage and acupressure. So these are the areas, and then, you know, not all the time do we pull out all modalities at right, once. Right, right. It's really working with the, uh, with the intention that the individual person comes in with and their needs, what needs need to be met and then how to get there, how to, how to work with that. And I know Mark has got some areas of specialty right. too yeah, to as well. In, to tie in, excuse me, something that the both of you have commented on is um, uh, the person's intention is really important. And yet uh, in a modality that uh, I offer in is uh, cranial sacral therapies. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are two different types of cranial sacral therapies that I do. Um, cranial sacral therapy is really interesting because it works with, um, as you learn uh, about cranial sacral, uh, with what a person's inner physician is referred to as their inner physician, which um, talks about their, their inner self knowing what perfect health is for them. So when somebody comes in and says, this is my conscious intention, and then you listen to their inner physician, uh, bring a blend of honoring both and with that um, the healing can be um, uh, so much more vast in the balance and because it's in balance with conscious and unconscious or inner physician and, and uh, somebody's intention mm -hmm. um, it, um, mm -hmm. it uh, is very uh, gentle also. Right, right and I think that one of the things that both of you have mentioned and that is um, massage can, w when they express what it is that they expect to achieve out of massage, okay. that it can be mental, it can be physical, it can be simply relaxing. There are many, many different possibilities. As our viewers are sifting through whatever resources they choose to sift through to, to, to determine this, what would be the most important um, advice you could give them in terms of of deciding which which massage therapy or which therapist or how they want to go about researching this, what would be your best advice? Sure. Well, gosh, it's it's, a, it's a, first off, it's almost like a a feeling about somebody. I think that's really important that you mm -hmm. that you have a good feeling about somebody that they're that that they're knowledgeable in how they can help. Mm -hmm. For example, working with fibromyalgia, does a therapist have experience working with fibromyalgia because you have to know what you're doing to work with that. Right. So it's important to ask questions. I have this condition. Have you worked with it successfully? And the, uh, the, the licensing is very important. The environment, if it's clean and inviting. I'm going to throw something out okay, there. Okay, yeah, please. Yeah, do. Yeah. I'm going to let you address it. Yeah. Um, again, just doing a little bit of a soul search and try to understand that you mentioned this earlier, Mark, um, 
one session is not going to work out 50 oh, years yes. of, of abuse to my body. True. So you definitely want to assess what it is that you're going to think about that uh, when you're moving forward. Yes. I want to encourage everyone, whether, um, whether this is something you've done in the past and may just need a little bit of a refresher, um, please check into it. There are a lot of resources out there that can tell you more about massage therapy and the therapists that are local. I'm sure that Candace and Mark would be happy to help you out and answer any and all of your mm -hmm. questions. Whether or not you choose to visit them here in Cornville at Northern Arizona Massage Therapy Center or you choose to um, look at other resources, please check it out. Please take care of yourself. And um, we are going to take a break and we'll meet you back in the studios. And uh, we're glad that you chose to join us today, and we're glad that you are getting the information that you're getting. We have taken a walk through some of the different events and um, experiences that are coming up in and around the Verde Valley. And our next one is one that is, uh, don't miss this one. It's going to be a great opportunity. This one happens to be in our neighboring Prescott area. In fact, uh, the, the primary event that we're going to be talking about is happening at the courthouse, but the event itself is put on by our friends at the Fippen Art Museum. And we're joined today by James Ward, and you are the events and... The, the events and volunteer coordinator. Volunteer That's coordinator. That's my official title. Okay, so officially, <laughs> you get to draft people to help put on all the events, yes, is that right? Yes, very much so. <laughs> okay, got it. That makes sense. I was... I've only lived in the Verde Valley. I say only. I've lived in the Verde Valley for about nine years. Mm -hmm. And the Fippen Art Museum, I had heard of it, but I never really, uh, I never really figured it out. We recently had um, our St. Jude Radiothon, mm -hmm. and passes to the Fippen Museum were one of the, um, one of our, our co-workers in the Prescott area got a few passes, and I was like, well, so what is this? So I was looking it up online. Lo and behold, I was opened my eyes to a whole new world. Oh. It's pretty, pretty amazing. Thank you. We're going to talk about the <clears throat> Western Art Show and Sale that's going to be at the Courthouse Plaza in Prescott on May 25th. Mm -hmm. But first, I would like to know a little bit more. I'd like our viewers to know a little bit more about the Fippen Art Museum and why they need to take that trip over the mountain and come see you. Okay. Well, the Pippin Art Museum, um, we've been, uh, we're coming up, let's see, we opened in 1984, and uh, we're a, a Western fine art museum. So we have various exhibits. We have about seven different exhibits at any one time. Mm -hmm. uh, we have two changing exhibit spaces, and then we have about five permanent exhibit spaces um, that are there. And uh, the museum was named after a Western artist who lived in the Prescott area back in the uh, 1940s and 50s up into the 60s, and that was George Fippen. Okay. Uh, now, George Fippen, um, for those of the folks in Sedona, they might, uh, if they've ever been up to that, uh, to the, the cowboy restaurant up in Sedona, where the cowboy artists first got together and met oh. and uh, decided that they would form the Cowboy Artists of America, that George Fippen was one of those men. It was Joe Beeler and Charlie Dye. George Fippen and Johnny Hampton, and they gathered together there in, at, uh, in Sedona, and on, a, on just on a napkin, they of wrote course. out a, a <laughs> charter over a couple of beers to create an organization that would promote Western art and Western artists, and George uh, became its first president. And uh, he, was a, he was very well known in the Prescott area, and, and he always had his door open, and he would invite people in, and he would have artists come and stay with him. He was fascinated with all forms of art, not just painting and drawing, which he was very successful at, mm -hmm. but also um, sculpting, photography, um, and even uh, you know film and, photo and, and and music and things like that. Unfortunately, George passed away very young. He was only 50 years old, and wow. he was really kind of at the height of his career. 
um, when he was taken by cancer, and um, the, the community didn't want to forget him. So they thought, what's the best way to honor his legacy? And they thought, well, you know, we could, we could paint a mural, we could have a statue commemorated to him, but really, wouldn't the best way be to have a museum devoted to Western art, the things that he loved so much. And so that's how the Fippen Museum was born. Um, we do all kinds of changing exhibits. We have a gallery on um, the history of ranching in the area, so we actually have artifacts. We just went uh, underwent a big expansion recently, so we doubled our exhibit space last year. Very nice. Yes, and we're very excited about it. We added classrooms, and we're starting to do more outreach programs and taking art projects into the schools, bringing people in to do projects there. Um, we have a, one of our permanent exhibits is, of course, George Fippen, the mm -hmm. legacy, the namesake of the museum. But then we also have other artists. We have a permanent exhibit on Ray Swanson, who is an artist who lived in the Prescott area, another cowboy artist. We have another permanent exhibit that we were able to create with the folks in Prescott Valley that's dedicated to um, an artist, Solon Borglum, who his brother is a little bit more well-known, Gutson Borglum, who created Mount oh, Rushmore. Yes. Solon, there's a, if you've ever been to downtown Prescott to the courthouse, there's mm -hmm. a big statue of Bucky O'Neill. Solon's the one that created that. He was a very well-known sculptor in the uh, late 1800s, early 1900s. Um, that's amazing. I've seen that, but I mm -hmm. never knew that. That's and amazing. so we were able to put together a little permanent uh, exhibit on him. Plus, we have changing sp uh, exhibit spaces. We have uh, the exhibit that we're running currently right now is called Early West Storyteller. Okay. And it focuses on artist interpretation of the early West, the pioneer West, mm -hmm. from Lewis and Clark up through the railroad coming in. And so we have uh, various different artists and various different mediums sort of that have portrayed that time period. Um, and one of the focuses on that is an artist named Jerry Metz, who did a whole series of paintings mm -hmm. following the course of the Lewis and Clark expedition. And uh, so we have his paintings there. And he actually traveled their route. He went to those locations, took photographs, sketches, and then used that to create these paintings. And we have several of them on display in that exhibit. What I'm visualizing as I'm listening to you is that visiting the museum is not, it's an experience. It's not just walk in and look at everything and say, wow, but you get to experience this whole kind of lifestyle. Well, we'd like to think so. We want to, I mean, um, a ranching community and sort of that, that Western life is mm -hmm. disappearing. I mean, they estimate that about a thousand ranches a year close mm -hmm. and, and are gone forever. Mm -hmm. And so that's really kind of a, a disappearing uh, a lifestyle. And right. we're trying uh, through the arts to to preserve that, the, you know, Western life and culture and its peoples, uh, its animals. Uh, uh, one of the, last year we did a wonderful exhibit on Western wildlife. Oh yeah. Um, the, and uh, uh, the, we just finished an exhibit all on Navajo artists, um, particularly two-dimensional Navajo art, which is more rare, so yeah. not so much the basketry. We had a little bit of that uh -huh. and weavings and things like that, but they're um, out of Santa Fe, there were many, many fantastic Navajo painters. Right. And uh, so we were able to have a, a whole exhibit. We had about 107 pieces, Amazing. really wonderful. One of the things that, that I, I want to make a point of is that much like our previous guest Nancy Rob Dunst with uh, with Gardening for Humanity, mm -hmm. their efforts combine some of the historical mm -hmm. perspectives al along with the art and I think that especially as you mentioned you're trying to you know begin some of the the programs and the classes and that type right. of thing I think that's so critical to uh, to make sure that we pass along and Along with that, we are going to talk a little bit more specifically about the um, Western Art sale, show and sale that you're going to be having at the courthouse. But before we do that, we're going to take a break and we'll be right back to talk about it. Hi, I'm Captain Larry Dawson with the Cottonwood Fire Department, here to talk to you about cooking safety in your home. The number one cause of house fires today is lack of safety in the kitchen. Always set a timer while you're cooking. If a fire starts in your oven,
close the door and turn the oven off. When kids are present while cooking, always use the back burners and keep handles turned in and out of reach of children. Never leave an open flame unattended and always have a working fire extinguisher nearby. Hey, thanks for stopping by. You know, I, I followed your character since the first episode. I'm a, I'm a big fan, big, big fan. Thank you. And listen, your storyline, it makes for incredible TV drama. Thing is, your drug use is very adult content. Too adult for the kids. So I'm gonna have to block you. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, have a good one. You're a nice lady. Welcome back to Senior Living, and we are talking with James Ward, the event and volunteer coordinator for the Phippen Art Museum in Prescott. And James, one of the reasons that, uh, that I reached out to you was because the Western Art Show and Sale yes. at the Courthouse Plaza in Prescott sounds amazing, and there's a lot. This is the 39th annual? Yes. It, it well, predates the museum. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> it actually is what gave birth to the museum. Okay. As I was saying earlier, um, you know, a group, the community wanted to memorialize George in some way, so they mm -hmm. thought, well, let's have a museum. Well, mm -hmm. you know, there, there, there's a lot involved in that. So right. they had to raise funds and find the land, and so in 1974, they started the very first Fippin Memorial Western Art Show and Sale. And it was actually inside the Yavapai County Courthouse in downtown Prescott, and, you know, there was probably 20 artists that wow. were involved, and then they started every they started doing it every year over memorial weekend mm -hmm. and uh, quickly they outgrew the courthouse and yeah. got kicked out onto the lawn and so now we do it on the beautiful grounds surrounding the historic Yavapai County Courthouse there in downtown Prescott every year and it's it's uh, the signature fundraising event for the Fippen Museum it took us 10 years to raise the funds to create the open the museum mm -hmm. in 1984 and then we've been doing it ever since and it's still our, our principal source of funding. I have to admit that I've never been over to the art show, um, so now I have another um, another item on my bucket list. Mm -hmm. But I can visualize, and what there there just can't be a better place than the courthouse plaza oh, to beautiful. do something like that. It's absolutely beautiful. I, if you've ever been there, I mean, it's 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 a beautiful, beautiful location. Oh yeah. And um, it the it's uh, um, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, and Monday, so it runs all Memorial Day w weekend, mm -hmm. and uh, it's really. It's really kind of seven events all rolled I was just going to say, one. there's parts and pieces to this, so there's lots of different give things. us some details. Well, from um, 9 to 5 uh, every day, uh, we have the artists for booths open. Mm -hmm. So we have over 100 different artists that have booths set up. They're all Western artists, mm -hmm. and they're there displaying and selling their artworks all mm -hmm. around the courthouse. Mm -hmm. Plus, um, we have on uh, Saturday and Sunday, we have what we call a quick draw competition, and that's where artists, um, get to paint a piece in front of a crowd so they go from blank canvas to finished work in about 45 minutes and it's painting all painting it's all painting oil water anything they anything want anything they okay. want all right. um, uh, so we have some artists, so there's oil painters, there's pastel, there's scratchboard artists, there, you know, there's all different kinds, and you, and you just stand around and, and watch them work, and then when it's over, uh, and before the paint can dry, we auction the pieces off 
to the crowd. Oh. And it, it's, it's one of the most popular parts of our, our annual Western Art Show and Sale. People absolutely love it. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and not only is it fun to watch, you get to see a piece created. And you're right there. The artist is just a few feet away. And then you can, you can bid on that piece. And really, it's a great way to pick up a piece from some very, very well-known artist for very little money. I mean, for a few hundred dollars, you can get a piece by an artist where if you went into a gallery, you'd be talking thousands, thousands. if not tens of thousands of dollars. Right. And it goes towards a great cause to keep it, the museum it all, going? All, ev all the proceeds, everything goes towards the Fippin Museum. Um, we also have events. We have an event happening at the museum all weekend long. Okay. We have another art sale that's happening at the museum, and admission is free. So if you visit the museum over that weekend, there's no charge. You can come on in, see the whole museum. Plus, we have uh, some works of art that are on sale, and all mm -hmm. the proceeds go to help benefit Great the museum. Great opportunity every, for everybody to check it out. And uh, there's even, if you go onto our website, we have one ticketed event. Everything's free all weekend long, mm -hmm. except we have one ticketed event. We have mm -hmm. our Denim to Diamonds Gala, which is kind of a fancy dress gala that happens in Prescott at the historic Hacienda Inn mm -hmm. on Saturday night. And uh, it's dinner, uh, dancing, Western, live Western music. Plus, we do a live art auction of a few selected pieces that have been donated to the museum by some very, very prominent artists. This event is right around the corner. Are there still tickets available for the gala? Yes, we okay. still have tickets available to the gala. It's $100 per person. You can just either call the Fippin Museum at 928-778-1385, or you can go online to our website. Uh, and get information there as well. Sounds great. What? Um, so the the t tickets are still available. I did want to double check with you. Sure. The the museum itself mm -hmm. is right out. It's not too far away from from downtown Prescott. We're just about six miles north of Prescott. We're on Highway 89 mm -hmm. um, in what's called the Granite Dells. Uh, okay. We're just just south of the 89A intersection there on Highway 89. It's 4701. Highway 89 in Prescott. And if you missed that, of course, it's on the website, which we've had up on the screen off and on um, while we visited with Mr. Ward. And I think that one of the things that uh, one of the things that I want to make sure that our viewers take note of is Western art is uh, it abounds here in our area. Absolutely. We are a hub for that kind that Very style. Much so. But to have the artists and the different pieces that you will have both on display and for sale yes. to benefit the Fippin Art Museum. It doesn't get much better it's than that. It's a wonderful cause. And we have artists from all over the country that come right. to, to this event, uh, in, in, even artists from Canada that come. They're all Western in theme, mm -hmm. um, but they're from all over the nation and outside of the nation. There are many Sedona artists that come and support us. We, you know, th sure. There's such a tremendous community of artists mm -hmm. in this area. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a great way for everybody to get together to support our local Western Art Museum, the FIPA Museum, but also just to support the arts in general and Western art specifically. Right. I think that's a, that's a very uh, worthwhile, worthwhile cause, no doubt. And I also think that there are uh, there are opportunities, even though, for instance, I may not be very artistically inclined, <laughs> but there are opportunities to help support that. You know, I now have a friend that oh, that volunteers at one of the other art museums, even though she doesn't consider herself an artist. But what a great way to get oh, involved! Yes. I am. I'm the volunteer coordinator, and um, we it takes over 100 volunteers to help us put this there event on. And we always need volunteers and we, in every area. If anyone's interested in volunteering, just tell them to call, well, just call the museum, 928-778-1385. Ask for me, James Ward. I'm the volunteer coordinator, and I will get you plugged in. <laughs> <laughs> I, get, I get the opportunity to say this, these two things every once in a while. I have a great job when I get to be, get to experience all of this great art, entertainment, the uh, educational, informational opportunities. I, I'm so lucky when it comes to that, <laughs> but I also get to say quite frequently, volunteer. Whatever your interest is, wherever you think you might be able to uh, really enjoy, volunteerism is healthy and uh, it can also be very rewarding as well. James Ward, thank you for thank joining you. us. We really appreciate you coming over. The Western Art Show and Sale at the Courthouse Plaza in Prescott, Memorial Day weekend, the 25th, 26th, 27th, the Fippin Museum. Uh, open the year-round, I believe. Yes. 
free mm -hmm. the weekend, Memorial Day weekend, to come in and visit and mm -hmm. check out the art. So take advantage of that. And we are going to leave you with that. Uh, again, thank you for coming over. Thank you. And thank you for watching. From all of us at Yellow Pipe Broadcasting and Birdie Valley Television, we will see you next time.